There was the sound of a blade penetrating the heart, and the last man fell. <coughs> D- dog He tries to squeeze out a curse, but the man's mouth was crushed by the woman's foot. He was the last man. Han Su Young looked around the office that had become a bloodbath. Huh. I barely killed them all. At any rate, the adaption of the Korean people is dirty and fast. This was the home of the Law of the Jungle, an incarnation club of Gyeonggi province. As soon as the scenario started, they chose a useful sponsor and turned themselves into a criminal group. They were those who refused the control of the government. If she didn't kill them now, they would become a cancer of the Korean peninsula. According to the original novel, they were bound to be such people. Tiam Kim Dokcha. She started cursing but didn't feel any better. Thus, Han Su Young added one more thing. Bastard Yu Jun Kyuk. She thought of the two people who went their own separate ways, and Han Su Young felt like an abandoned pr- food processor. Damn it. Kim Dokcha has a reason, but what's wrong with Yu Jun Kyuk? The moment that Yu Jun Kyuk left the Soul Dome, he continued to do things that weren't in the original third regression. He stayed alone in a room, talked to himself, and then threw the Korean Peninsula scenarios away for the personal scenarios. Thanks to this, cleaning up the remnants were left entirely to Han Su Young. What is he thinking? Shit. In any case, she was currently the last person who read Ways of Survival. Kim Dokja and Yoo Jung Hyuk weren't present, leaving her the only one responsible for the Korean Peninsula. She sighed and quietly left the scene of the slaughter. Ah, what a surprise. What are you doing here? There was a woman waiting for her at the office doorway. The woman wore a combat uniform that clung to her body, and her hair flowed around her in a cool manner. As if conscious of the body that was revealed, she wore a wide coat on her shoulders. It was a refreshing but very beautiful face. Well, this is what the media stated. Han Su Young wondered, I thought you were busy with TV these days. Isn't that the case? Han Su Young stared at Yu Sang Ah with a slightly unfriendly look. Yu Sang Ah moved away from the wall she was leaning on and looked down at Han Su Young. There was a slight difference in their heights. There was a moment of confrontation before Yu Sang Ah opened her mouth with a brief sigh. <sighs> How long are you going to act this way? What? You can't kill all of them just because law and order is gone. Han Su Young was too lazy to explain and just waved her hands. Yu Sang Ah didn't know what type of people belonged to the Law of the Jungle. In addition, she didn't know what they would do. She didn't know, which was why she could argue with such childish justice. They are the ones who will do something wrong in the future. However, you didn't give them a chance. It's already been determined. You don't know anything. Han Su Young replied while passing by Yu Sang Ah. She couldn't share the future. The information that many people knew would become less valuable and would change the future. Kim Dokja would have probably done the same thing, so... Three ways to survive in a ruined world. Han Su Young instantly stopped walking at Yu Sang Ah's words. Isn't that the book the prophets call the Revelation? You must have heard something funny. Did you read it? Han Su Young bit her lips before opening her mouth. You don't need to know. Constellations seemed to have no idea about this book. The story had slowly spread, so it wasn't strange. Some of the readers were outside the Soul Dome, and there were also the rumors that prophets had leaked. Yu Sang Ah also knew that she was the first apostle. Did Kim Doksha read it? That's how he knows information of the future. Who knows? It was an uncomfortable topic. Han Su Young pulled out a dagger. The information about ways of survival was filtered, but she didn't know how long it would continue. Thus, she had to reduce the number of mouths. Why did he do that? Han Su Young turned her head at the sudden, sad tone. Why did Dok Shishi make such a choice, even though he knows the future? Han Su Young looked at Yu Sang Ah's face and seemed to know why she came. Han Su Young stared quietly at Yu Sang Ah's face. She had been an ordinary office worker before the scenario started. She was in the same company as Kim Dokcha. Why? Han Su Young suddenly felt hot. Everybody talks about Kim Dokcha everywhere I go. They don't know anything about Kim Dokcha. Han Su Young took short breaths as a terrible voice flowed out. Without knowing why she was so angry, Han Su Young cried out, 
He's a selfish bastard. He only thinks about himself from beginning to end. <laughs> the person who fooled people to the end lied and disappeared as a hypocrite. What do you know about him? You don't even know if he's dead or alive. A fleeting scene ran through her head. It was Kim Dokcha's eyes looking at her in the tenth scenario. It was that damn expression that made her pull out her knife first. No, he can't be dead. I'm sure he's alive and living well in another story. Do you really think so? You don't know Kim Dokcha. There was a deep sense of self-deprecation in her t cold tone. Nobody knew Kim Dokcha, including Han Su Young herself. Yet Yu sung answer was different. No, I know. What? A person doesn't change so suddenly. Yu sung voice was calm. The scenario started, and for a while, Doksha Shi was like a different person. A man who could calm down in front of life-threatening situations and kill unknown beasts without hesitation. He was different from the Kim Doksha I knew. You probably didn't know Kim Doksha very well. Even so... Doksha Shi is still Joksha Shi. Han Su Young closed her mouth. A person who likes reading books rather than building up his specs. His presentation abilities aren't good, but he will listen to somebody else's presentation. That Kim Doksha was different from the one Han Su Young knew. The person who knew Kim Doksha was talking. Thus, he was obviously lonely. Somewhere in front of her, Kim Doksha seemed to be making a face. In a world with no one, Kim Dokja might be looking at the sky alone in a world that no one knew. Han Su Young Shi, I have to go and rescue Dokja Shi. Han Su Young saw her determination and felt somehow defeated. You're a lucky person, Kim Dokja. People are worrying about you. Han Su Young was about to open her mouth when she saw a message in the air. A new main scenario has started. Son of a bitch! The great hall was opening in the air. The cries of monsters were heard from somewhere. The surprise Yu Song Ah and Han Su Young stood back to back. A giant monster was swooping down the great hall. And then the Dokabi's voice was heard. The wave pattern is obvious and very slow, but I put it in because people seem to be too free these days. Yu Song Ah looked, frowned at the sudden emergence of the situation and frowned. Was this the original content? I don't know. I don't remember everything. This was why she didn't want to do it alone. She knew about the future, but the information she knew was about flimsy things. Kim Dokja knew many rounds, and Yu Jung Hyuk, who made it through the rounds, might be able to make a breakthrough, but not Han Su Young. The giant serpent flew through the dark clouds and landed on the ground. Every time the long tail swept over the ground, the high-rise buildings collapsed. This was a third-grade strange demon species, the Kragagan. It was the name of a monster who descended as a disaster in the twelfth scenario. How do we beat that? Han Su Young tried hard to recall the contents of the original novel, but no matter how hard she thought about it, a strategy didn't pop up. Then the only way left was a full-scale battle. Fortunately, there was Yu Sang Ah right next to her. They weren't colleagues, but it was better than nothing. The stigma of Black Flames Level 6 has been activated. She focused her magic power on her dagger while activating the skills of the weapon. The third grade dragon species, Kragagon, has defended against the attack using fire resistance. The third grade dragon species, Kragagon, has defended against the attack using shadow resistance. <sighs> You're no help against a damn lizard. The enemy had fire and dark resistance, so Han Su Young's skills didn't affect it at all. The attacks just seemed to tickle and annoy the strange dragon. Constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon is gloomy. She looked around and Yu Sang Ah's situation didn't seem much better. Han Su Young thought to herself, if only she had inherited the story of the Abyssal Black Flame Dragon. Damn it! How do I inherit that damn story? Han Su Young's expression darkened as she looked at the group of incoming strange dragons. If that jerk Kim Dokcha was here, he could have told her what to do. It was at this moment. The constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon tells you that if you want, he can tell you their weakness. You know their weakness? The constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon is nodding. Don't make a fool of yourself. You don't know much about the scenarios. The constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon is jumping around wildly. Han Su Young listened to the Black Flame Dragon's childish message and inwardly sighed. 
That brat came Dokja. He must have laughed at me when I chose the Black Flame Dragon. The Abyssal Black Flame Dragon was clearly a powerful constellation. However, his intelligence was much lower compared to other constellations. Why? This guy was too strong since his birth and didn't need much strategy to attack the scenarios. It was cool to hear, but it wasn't good from the position of his incarnation. However, this time was something different. The constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon says that the Kragagon's weakness is the silver scale on top of its head. Really? Last time he told me the wrong thing. The constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon claims on his Black Flame Dragon that this is real. You said that last time as well. The constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon claims that this story was told by a reliable source. Reliable source. Since there was no other method, Han Suyang decided to follow the words of the Black Flame Dragon. Han Suyang jumped onto the strange dragon's tail and used footwork to run up. She crossed the streamlined body. She really saw a silver scale near the crown of his head. <laughs> the dagger dug into the scale and the Kragagon collapsed with a terrible scream. The breath of the giant monster stopped in an instant. Han Suyang was stunned and muttered, Really? Aren't you quite useful? The constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon is puffing up his chest with a triumphant expression. Yu Sang Ah flew through the air and said, Did you find its weakness? In any case, the silver scale is its weakness. That's all you have to attack. Thanks to the information given by the Black Flame Dragon, the two of them safely suppress the Kragagons. The constellation Bald General of Justice admires your performance. Han Suyang received the messages of the constellations and slightly frowned. Usually, it would be a pleasant situation, but today was something wrong. Uh, she always felt like this when she was teased by Kim Dokcha. At this moment, something ran through her head. Hey, Black Flame Dragon. The constellation Abyssal Black Flame Dragon is surprised and looked at, looks at his incarnation. Tell me honestly, who did you hear this from? The third night has arrived. I listened to the message and recalled what happened a while ago. He really did as I told him. Just like Kim Namun, perhaps the Abyssal Black Flame Dragon wasn't as bad as I knew. Either way, he was Han Su Young's sponsor, thus it was okay to tell him this. I'm safe. Don't worry. Tell this to that person who asked. Revolutionary! I had to endure this. Endure it now so I could smile and meet them again. I quietly moved through the night. <laughs> Screams came from everyone. It was the sound that signaled the executioners appearing. It was bloody from the beginning. Maybe it would be a terrible night that couldn't be compared to the other two days. I killed three executioners, so tonight they would come full force. Nevertheless, I wasn't afraid. Starting from tonight, I would have a counterattack. Zheng Haiyang. Zheng Haiyang walked forward at my words. He was very tense, but it wasn't the same expression as before. Zheng Haiyang asked, Eh, can I do well? No one can do it better than you. Do you really think so? I only learned the skill two hours ago. Two hours is enough. I spoke with confidence. It wasn't just to reassure Zheng Haiyang. Who is the most perfect incarnation? One day, the flippant commenters of the Star Stream discussed this topic. The strongest incarnation in a one-on-one -on -one fight is definitely Yu Jing Hyuk. There's no one who can fight as well as him. No one can beat Anna Croft when it comes to information. How about Lee Hyung Sung? He's the best tanker. It's Ravnir Khan in major wars. Cheng Haiyang's name wasn't mentioned at all. He was inferior to Yu Jung Hyuk in a one-on-one -on -one fight. He had less information than Anna Croft. His defense wasn't better than Lee Hyung Sung. He wasn't as effective as Ron Veer Khan in a major war. However, the most perfect incarnation is someone who must do well in everything. Then it's been decided. He had more defense than Yu Jung Hyuk. He was better in a one-on-one -on -one fight than Anna Croft. He was better in a large war than Lee Hyung Sung, and he was a more outstanding pre presence with more information than Ron Veer Khan. The character Zheng Haiyang has used Fighter Transformation Level 9. Zheng Haiyang is the most perfect incarnation. Zheng Haiyang's body moved in a burning curve and painted the sky red. He wasn't exceptional in one area, but he had the most attributes and skills of everyone in Ways of Survival. The moment he acquired a skill, he had the ability to reach the highest level of the skill sooner than anyone else. The master of the unidentified wall, K-1. 
king of transcendence, Jang Haiyang. The second part of Ways of Survival began with this guy.